that. Can you get there? We go. Thank you very much. We are going to record this and share it on the e-planning site for people who are not able to attend tonight. And Zach, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, this is Zach Reichold. I'm the Lower Potomac Field Station Manager. Great. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Are you ready to start your presentation? I sure am. Um, again, thanks to everyone for joining us today for the information informational presentation. Um, today we'll go over how you can provide public comments an overview of the proposal and environmental assessment, and then take your questions you may have on the proposal at the end. We greatly appreciate your attendance and look forward to your comments to improve the proposal. <clears throat> the BLM appreciates the continued interest of the community and our elected officials in our management efforts for our public lands. The public comment period began on February 21st and runs for 45 days. Documents are available on the e-planning website, which is also where we are accepting comments. The link for e-planning will be put in the chat box for you and has been emailed out as well. Please submit all comments by April 7th. When you go to the e-planning website, you'll see some information about the project and contact information in the center area. On the left-hand side, you can access the environmental assessment where it says documents and submit comments where it says participate now. When you click on participate now, it takes you to another screen where you are, will again click the participate now button. That will take you to the screen where you submit comments. You can put them in the first box or upload a file with your comments if you have a document. There is also a place to include your contact information. Once you have filled out your comments, you can preview, then submit your comments. Please note when you submit comments, including your personal information, the BLM may not be able to withhold this information. When you submit comments, please focus on the issues within this proposal. The BLM will review all comments and consider and respond to substantive comments in the next version of the environmental assessment. Changes will then be incorporated also into the environmental assessment. Substantive comments, um, which are the ones that are most helpful for us, do the following. Question with a reasonable basis, the accuracy of information in the draft. Question the adequacy, methodology, or assumptions in the draft. Present new information present reasonable alternatives other than those currently analyzed, or cause changes or revisions in more of the alternative in the draft. Now I'll provide an overview of the proposal and the information that you can find in the environmental assessment. The Meadowood Farm Planning Analysis and Meadowood SRMA Integrated Activity Management Plan directs the BLM to focus on recreation, highlight wild horse and burrow program through adoption events, and develop environmental education programs and facilities. These are the overarching guiding documents for Meadowood following the BLM multiple use mission in the Eastern States. In 2021, the BLM proposed to build a multi-use pavilion to support wild horse and burrow adoption events and recreation and educational activities. Following public involvement, the project was modified and approved and construction was completed in June, 2022. The BLM is now moving into the additional measures that are needed to make this a safe, accessible and fully functional space. The need for BLM action is to address maintenance and safety issues with the parking lot, install utility services, sorry, install utility services to support and vents at the multi-purpose pavilion and continue to provide a pollinator garden for recreation and environmental education events without conflict from vehicular traffic. The purpose of the BLM action is to provide a safe, low maintenance parking area that would be ABA and ADA compliant, 
install necessary utilities to support plant activities and events at the multipurpose pavilion, and relocate the pollinator garden. So to walk through each of these proposed actions, the first one is to pave the parking lot with asphalt, which would improve maintenance, prevent ponding and water runoff, allow for painted marked parking space lines and dedicated handicap spaces, and provide ABA access to the pavilion and vault toilets. Please know the area proposed for this is within um, the same area that was proposed, reviewed, and approved in the 2021 EA for the multi-use pavilion. By paving this, it will allow for easier access, um, easier maintenance, accessibility for the pavilion and toilet, and installation of the gates. The toilet and gates were also reviewed and approved in the 2021 EA. In 2021, when we were reviewing the proposed pavilion, some commenters expressed concern for the butterfly garden located within the middle of the parking lot, namely that the garden was impacted by dust and dirt from vehicles, and there was a safety risk to animals and pollinators from vehicles when they were accessing the garden. To address this, we are proposing to move the butterfly garden away from vehicular traffic, dust, and general commotion, yet still make it accessible for educational and recreation events. <clears throat> The existing pollinator garden would be relocated to the Hidden Pond Trail to maximize its use for a recreation and environmental education. This trail was restored in 2014 to provide a universally accessible trail to Hidden Pond. The location would provide a safe natural setting removed from vehicular traffic, yet be fully accessible. This would eliminate the hazards associated with moving vehicles to visitors, volunteers, BLM staff, as well as the pollinators themselves. Under this proposal, native plants would be cultivated as appropriate for the location's soil type, retention of water, and exposure to sunlight. We would select plant species to achieve a diverse, resilient, and robust native community to attract and support pollinator species. We would take measures to transplant and replant the current native plant garden at the new location, as well as um, moving the existing interpretive signage. We did consider keeping or relocating the garden in Mustang Loop, but after consideration did not feel that this would meet the purpose of providing a safe, accessible area without conflicts from vehicles. This map shows the current location of the Butterfly Garden at Mustang Loop and the proposed location along the Hidden Pond Trail off Belmont Road. This map shows the area closer up. Please note, with this new location, we will be able to equal and in the future expand the extent of the pollinator garden. The last action proposed under this environmental assessment is the installation of utilities. Electrical utilities would either be connected above the ground or trench below the ground from an existing pole along Gunston Road to a corner of the multi-use pavilion. Security lights would be attached to the electrical utility. Um, this, when we reviewed and approved the pavilion, we approved solar security lighting, which would, um, and we feel that the, the electrical power um, security lighting is more reliable um, and so is a better option for us. Electrical outlets would be installed for BLM use during events and would be controlled by a key lock electrical box. The security lighting as just as it was, um, approved in 2021 would be positioned downward rather than toward the sky, be motion activated and have orange colored lights to minimize light pollution, consistent with the 2021 decision. Water utilities would be connected from a main water line along Gunston Road to a key locked spigots at the multi-purpose pavilion. 
Trenching for water utilities would occur within BLM lands from Gunston Road to the multi-purpose pavilion. Trench would be placed six inches below the frost line and electrical would be placed according to the utility specifications. When the BLM completes environmental reviews, we identify the affected environment and potential impacts to it. The BLM interdisciplinary team reviewed this proposal and identified one issue for detailed analysis. How would paving the parking lot, installing utilities, and relocating the pollinator garden impact the use of Mustang Loop? The environmental assessment provides details, identifying that the proposed action would improve use and access for visitors. We completed the required consultation on this project, including with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service on Endangered Species, the Virginia Historic Preservation Office, and Tribal Nations. No effects or concerns were identified. So now we'll open it up to your questions on the proposal. Um, please note we are not recording comments during this meeting, but um, do encourage your comments through the e-planning website. Um, please raise your hand or enter a question in the chat box if you would like to ask a question. Do we have any questions so far? Okay, we've got a question from Maria. Um, Maria says, thank you for being here. What are the safety concerns of the existing parking lot that were considered when deciding to add a paved option? How large of a space is the proposed parking spot in acres? And has the handicapped accessible area at Hidden Pond had any updates or upkeep since 2014? So the first question, Stephanie, for you and Zach are, what are the safety concerns of the existing parking lot that were considered when deciding to add a paved option? Um, I'll speak first and then allow Zach to add anything if you would like. Um, I think the biggest thing is being able to maintain the paved parking lot and add additional features in, um, for safety. For instance, um, you know, there aren't big ruts um, occurring there as it would with gravel. Um, and it also allows us to more easily um, put up the gates and other safety features. Um, as for the space of the proposed parking area, it's 2.1 acres. That's what it was in 2021, and that is what we're looking at here. Um, and Zach, I'll let you speak to anything additional there or about the Hidden Pond area. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. So one of the other things that we have is that when uh, we have rain events in that parking area, it is gravel and it does attract individuals uh, with their vehicles that like to come in and uh, I guess we call it spin brodies, but but spin around circles in the parking area and throw the gravel around. Uh, it's caused a number of accidents where individuals have hit both the pollinator garden and the uh, ballards that are in the parking area. Um, it does pond water in some of the ruts, and it's a considerable amount of um, essentially maintenance on our part, but it also makes for a slick walking surface at times in the mud. And so we'd like to try and eliminate that. Did I answer your question? I think that so. Thank you, Zach. Um, the second question is how large of a space is the proposed parking lot in acres? 2.1 acres. And the third question from Maria is has the handicapped accessible area at Hidden Pond had any updates or upkeep since 2014? Zach, do you have any updates on the handicap accessible area at Hidden Pond? So we haven't made any updates per se to the Hidden Pond parking area, although uh, there are potential future actions uh, to look at potentially upgrading and putting down uh, a better surface. But we are going to go in and put down uh, additional gravel and compact it so that it's a it's it's easier uh, for individuals. Uh, to access the um, the accessible trail that's there, 
It's the kind of um, rubbery, spongy trail that you walk on. Uh, it's approximately three quarters of a mile, I believe, uh, that loops by the hidden pond, uh, fishing pond. Okay, thank you, Zach. Um, we will go next to Marvin Miller. Uh, Jasmine, if you can allow Marvin to unmute, and then Marvin can unmute and ask his question. And after Marvin, we'll go to Jonathan, and then there's a chat from Stephanie in the in the chat box, and we'll go to Stephanie after Jonathan. So Marvin, are you are you on? I hope I am. I have two questions. Okay. One is, have you looked at a pervious surface for the parking lot so that the water goes through the surface? I'm aware that they are used in some warehouses for tractor trailer trucks, so they should be able to handle regular vehicle traffic, and they are more environmental friendly. And the second question is, what what is the analysis that led to the conclusion that solar would not be sufficiently reliable for security with adequate batteries at this facility? And thank you. Thank you for the questions and comment, Marvin. Um, thank you for the information, um, comment about um, using a different alternative besides asphalt. I hope that you can submit that into e-planning so that we can take a look at that in detail when we do our comment analysis. Um, as for the solar, um, it's not that solar wouldn't work. It's that we have envisioned having electricity out there since the beginning. Um, and we believe that solar, um, while it will work, the electri electrical utility hopefully will provide a more reliable um, option for security lighting. We can also um, you know, look at having a solar backup or something like that. But again, those are great comments and please, please submit them in e-planning so that we can get those looked at in detail. Thank you, Marvin. And Jonathan, Kiel, you're up, up next. Um, you're currently on mute, if you can unmute yourself. I have unmuted myself. Can I be heard? You can be heard. Okay, um, I, I'd like to second the comments that, that uh, Marvin had made. That one of my primary comments has to do with the parking lot. Um, and I think a permeable surface would serve both BLM and the community much better. Um, I live on Harley Road. Uh, I had some problems with the, the entire project from the beginning because of how it would change the nature of the, of the area. Um, Removing the pollinate, moving the pollinator garden removes what is basically a jewel in our community because we frequently go through the park and, and, and can enjoy the pollinator garden. Moving it over to the hidden pond basically leaves us without it. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a problem. Part of the reason for moving it seems to be because BLM's design of the parking lot would harm it. If we used a permeable surface, and I have some suggestions in terms of how you may want to look at that. Um, the reason for a two plus acre parking lot is because a couple of times a year, there will be big programs with lots of vehicles. But the majority of the time, a, the small parking lot that's currently there is of adequate size. Uh, my suggestion is to use a permeable surface and to break the parking lot up into the normal day-to-day -day use, and then the larger area, which would normally be closed, can be opened when a reservation and permitting is done and the larger project is happening. That would also give BLM the opportunity to section off so they could actually rotate the regular parking area to do maintenance as is needed in, in other areas. And the parking lot could be designed to discourage the kind of of wheel spinning that, that Zach was mentioning. So, Mr. Keel. The, the whole idea of a two acre asphalt pad is very, very troubling because, as an attract, first of all, as an attractive nuisance, we're going to end up 
skate. Mr. Kiel, do you have a question? Well, yeah, I mean, have you given adequate consideration to alternatives to a two acre parking lot? Okay, that that really changes the nature of the area. And and we could serve much better, probably actually be cheaper for BLM to use a, a permeable surface, divide it so that large portions of it are not accessible on regular days when there's only a dozen or two dozen cars there, but that could be open. The other aspect of an asphalt parking lot is that is actually dangerous to the horses that you're inviting in. Asphalt is a very poor surface for horses. And Thank you very much, Jonathan. Um, really appreciate your comments here. And again, um, please submit them to us through the e-planning website so that we can take a detailed look at those and improve the proposal. I would. I have one other comment I would like to make. Um, for those of us that, that are your neighbors that live right in the area, we've had some discussions, but but the community feels very left out of the process. It would seem to me, you re reached out to tribes, apparently, and they didn't have any comment because there really are no tribes here, but some outreach to the immediate community to have a sit down and discussion about what would be better for the community as a partner and a neighbor with BLM. I, I, I'm very disappointed that this was again dropped in our lap and we feel the need to defend the, the community's environment from what BLM seems to be doing without any consideration for the people who actually live here. So thank you, Jonathan. We are actually having this meeting today to reach out to the community. We have a 45 day public comment period and we are trying very hard to get your feedback on it. Um, let's move on and see if we have any more questions. Again, a reminder that we are not accepting, we are not documenting the comments coming in here. We encourage you please to submit your documents through e-planning so that we can get that incorporated. Thank you. Our next question comes from Stephanie Calabresi. Is the butterfly garden only going to be accessible by walking to Hidden Pond, or is there another easier path that will be installed? So as Zach mentioned earlier, the entire trail there is, I think it's 0.75 miles. Um, we can look at the exact location of where we're planning to put the butterfly garden there to try to move it closer, to move it close. But uh, it is intended to be away from the parking lot. Okay, and Stephanie had a second question. Will there be increased monitoring with these changes or more police presence? So again, this is just a proposal. Um, if that's something you would like us to consider looking at, we are, as always, trying to work closer with the local police and get increased monitoring out there. Our next question is from John Passor. How will you address the attractive nuisance problem of a large paved area? Skateboarders, four wheelers, automobiles, et cetera, pose particular problems. So thank you for that question. That's another thing that would be great to get submitted as a comment so that we could get it incorporated. Um, we, we feel like having the parking lot um, hardened um, will help with putting up security gates, um, but we will, that is the primary thing we're looking at there now. The next question is from Terry. Did you take into consideration that pavement is a big risk for horses, especially those with shoes, the Mustang or horseback riding? This is very disconcerting for both local rides who ride in and those trailering and the need to load and unload their horses. Um, that is already a comment we have received and um, are starting to look into. So thank you very much, whoever submitted that comment. And we appreciate anyone else who submits that comment to us through e-planning. And uh, the next question is from R. McCarter. How many vehicles will the parking lot hold? 
Zach, do you know how many vehicles the parking lot is intended for offhand? Not at this time. We would we would maintain and, and adhere to the standard practices. I believe it's a I believe it's a either a 10, a 10 foot or an eight foot parking space for each vehicle. And there'd also be uh, areas for trailers to pull off and to park as well. So those parking uh, spaces would be a little bit longer. Um, and so we haven't made that decision yet um, as to the capacity of the parking area. Thanks, Zach. Our next question is from Terry Abrams and Marvin Miller, I see that you have your hand raised and I will we'll get to unmuting you in one second. Um, Terry Abrams said, sorry, you meant to say this Mustang trailhead is very popular for horseback riding and it is very disconcerting, disconcerting and a danger for both local riders who ride in and those trailering and need to load and unload their horses to have to do so on pavement. So that was a follow-up from the previous question. Are there any clarifying, any points you want to clarify, Stephanie? No, thank you for the comment. And again, absolutely, please use the e-planning website that is up on the screen. If you all have comments that you would like to share or things that you would like the BLM to consider as the environmental assessment is revised, um, things that, you feel should be incorporated. So we're going to go to Marvin Miller um, for another question from Mr. Miller. Um, Jasmine, can you please unmute him? Mr. Miller. Uh, you, there you, are. you raised another question when you mentioned security gates. And since the park is generally closed from dusk till dawn and vehicles, kids running around playing games on the uh, parking lot at night would be an issue. Do you have contemplated in your security gates a timed way that they are open and closed with the sunlight and sunset? Uh, is that something that you've considered? That is something we've been considering. Um, I'm looking at the questions. There's a couple of questions on the security gates. So I'm just gonna scroll back. You can see the screen here. These are the two gates that were proposed in the 2021 um, when we proposed the pavilion and the associated increased parking with it. These are the two areas we are looking at putting up the gates. We would like to have them closed in um, when the park is closed for security is the goal. We have not yet looked into the options of whether or not that will be manual or if there'll be some type of electrical way to do that. We would we would look to other parks and facilities and, and how they use control points of that nature. Um, but I can imagine something similar to what you would see at uh, rental car places or something like that could be an option where it allows access uh, during certain parts of the day, and then it locks and it has, you know, some sort of barrier or spikes that would prohibit um, individuals from coming in at certain periods, but allow them to leave. But that's just off the top of my head. But we would look at other similar uh, uh, parks and areas uh, that that have uh, security gates and and look at how they do it. The next written question we have is from James Martin. What fact? What were the factors cited in determining that Belmont Road was a better location for the pollinator garden? There are several factors that would mitigate against the new location. Um, the Belmont A, the Belmont Road location has a much smaller parking lot. B, it would put the garden on the tree line rather than in currently brightly sunlit area. C, it would put a garden that currently contains milkweed in the area for which you've just chemically eradicated milkweed for the safety of the case on horses. Thank you very much for that comment. We encourage you to copy and paste that right into Eve planning and we will um, take a look at it in our analysis. And I think we've addressed the next question about what will stop folks from using the pavilion whenever they wish. Um, Stephanie and Zach covered the use of the gate. Um, there's a... Uh, hopefully the area will not be lit up and the pavilion will not be used after say 6 p.m. So 
just to clarify that as a question, um, Stephanie, do you want to go over again the lighting plan and um, the hours of operation or if those have been considered? So the, the, the lighting is proposed to be security lighting. It will be downward facing. It will be motion activated and it will be orange colored. Um, and the area will continue under its current open hours, um, which I believe is sun up to sundown. Next question is from Maria. How does the paved parking specifically make it easier to put up safety gates as opposed to permeable or unpaved surface? I think the biggest concern, I'm not an engineer, but I think the biggest concern is gravel and other debris getting in the way of the moving pieces of the gates. Nancy, um, you asked about the, where exactly the gate access will be located. Um, we have the map up now. Jonathan um, asked, given security concerns, will BLM consider including security cameras for the area? They will need to be monitored so there can be a response when illegal activities occur. Is BLM aware of the extensive use of hidden pond area that is going on by the US Army? Um, so uh, security cameras are something we are always considering, but there are many different things that go into that, namely that they need to be monitored and uh, we need to figure out the best way to be able to do that. Um, and yes, we are aware that Hidden Pond area does have the caisson horses or caisson horses being located there um, soon. Nancy and asks, when the area hosts a large event, how will the community be notified? Um, that's something that we can put out on our regular emails to the community. I think in the um, pavilion um, environmental assessment and decision, we also said that we would um, post that up at the pavilion. Are there any last questions? Remember, you can either raise your hand in Zoom or you can add a question in the chat. If you have a comment, you can submit the comments on the BLM ePlanning website. The next question is, what about restrictions on noise, music, et cetera? Um, I, that is outside the scope of this current analysis. Um, that was not something we analyzed within here, but um, it's something if you bring up in a comment, we will be sure to take a look at or consider. Um, can someone please post the e-planning link in the chat so that everyone can see that? Um, and I also want to add that um, you know, everyone pretty much has my phone number and email address. You're always welcome to reach out to me or Zach, um, and everyone knows where to contact him as well with questions or concerns. We appreciate the community. We know that you're heavily involved and invested in this site, and that's why we're reaching out to you. We don't have funding. We don't have, this is not something that we are going to be building in the next couple months. We're trying to reach out to you early about it. Okay, and if you would like to see it, the e-planning link is in the chat. So that is available and you can click on that directly and it'll take you to the e-planning project site and put your comments in there. Um, and all comments are examined as part of the NEPA process. Any other questions for us today? We appreciate the feedback we heard back, we heard today. Um, reminder that the comment period does end on April 7th. Um, and if you have additional questions, um, please feel free to reach out to me or Zach. 
about this proposal or anything at Lower Potomac, and we'll be sure to continue to keep you updated um, as things arise there. Thanks everyone for joining us this evening. Have a good night.